Foot Clan, it's Wednesday. We're talking buy, sell questions, some tough ones in there. We're looking at Austin Eckler. What's his trade value? Devontae Freeman. And we're going to talk a little bit about this trade I made in our league of record, and Jason's not happy about it. Stay tuned. Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, want to remind you, listeners of the podcast, you want to see these beautiful faces. Woo. We are on YouTube youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers not only is the podcast the full length show is up there we're giving you highlights of the show and we're giving you exclusive behind the scenes footage check out things like our studio the water bets we have massively upgraded the way we're paying out water bets this year you gotta go subscribe youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers and navy federal supporting today's show Navy Federal is proud to serve over 8 million members, including active duty military, the DOD, veterans, and their families. You'll receive a lifetime of membership benefits with Navy Federal, and you can easily access accounts, transfer money, pay bills, and deposit checks with the Navy Federal mobile app. Visit NavyFederal.org slash footballers for more information or call 1-888-842-6328 or download the Navy Federal Credit Union app. Message and data rates may apply. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Always great to be with you. And we are back in black today. We really are. I Back in black! We are, we're, we're all wearing black today. I don't know what it's symbolic of. Well, but I can tell you, I wear black almost every day. It's symbolic of <laughs> it's a, symbolic of slimming down my fat belly. It really does make you look skinnier. Well, if I wear, say, a What's red What's the worst shirt, color? Would it be red? Uh, red, orange, blue colors. Yeah, I can think just of insults colors? for just all of them. Colors. You can think of insults for each one. Yeah, yeah a different joke. Kool Aid that- Man. Yeah, Kool Aid Man. An orange. I mean, it's just an orange. Oh yeah, that one's <laughs> real easy. Blue. Then I just you violet. Got- you're turning yeah, violet. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. where I went to. Yeah. Well, this is really. T- <laughs> Take a turn. I will see myself hey, out. No, no. You you're look a good wonderful. friend of the show, Jason. You're, you're a good friend. <laughs> he owns part of the company, Mike. Well, you know, technicality. And a good friend of the show. And a good friend of me. <laughs> this is I not the direction. I'm surprised to- you guys are friends after yesterday's trade fiasco. Oh. Someone went undercover brother with the footage and then just, just put it like, you went full Antonio Brown. You, you just did. you just recorded Jason's reaction. Jason had no idea, and then you're like, "Yeah, I'm gonna put this up." That's great. That's illegal. First of all, <laughs> what you did is illegal. Now I loved it. <laughs> oh, and now you're John Gruden. Yes, <laughs> I'm. I'm in. It was great. If you don't know what we're talking about, are you gonna put that up on YouTube as I'll well? I'll put it up on YouTube. Yeah, I I tweeted it out, and I saw you retweeted it mercifully instead of filing a lawsuit lawsuit <laughs> against me. Yes, today's show it's perfect because today's show is all about. Trades. We're going to answer a bunch of trade questions with some some big names. It's kind of the breather day, and the, over the course of the week, we just reflected and did the waiver wire and talked about week two. Tomorrow, Friday, into the matchups for week three. Today, we've got some buy sell. We've got trade talk, and so yesterday in our league of record, I, I, I I'll just tell it, tell it how it is. Our our league of record. It's a three keeper league. This will this will be a a peek behind the curtain, right? More Antonio Brown talk, Wizard of Oz, peek behind the curtain. But we basically have this league where, you know, you there's a lot of draft pick trading. People sell yep. their future draft in order to acquire a big asset this year. There's three keepers in the league. The economy of this league is unlike most fantasy football leagues. We move our trade deadline up a couple extra weeks. We have a big punishment for, you know, like if you finish last in this league, you get uh, you lose the water bet, right? But you get watered by every single person in the league in a uh, turtleneck sweater, a turtleneck sweater, and then have to draft for three, four hours, soaking wet in a turtleneck sweater with your name and with your team stitch onto the back of it. So we're in this league, and I'm negotiating, and apparently Jason's negotiating at the same time, and and we're both trying to acquire Patrick Mahomes, and I was going after Chris Carson, and I'm basically trying to go all in on this season and, and make a commitment to make my team stronger. The the Pat Mahomes owner basically said, 
he's on the block. Yeah. So we both went to work. As we do. And it, look, things are a lot harder for me in this league than they used to be, trade wise. People are hip. Yeah. People are hip. We we have a show now <laughs> that that doesn't help. And I basically get to the the finish line on getting Mahomes and Carson and and the other guy says, Okay, um I'm like, I'm on the fence. I don't know if I want to include a pick. And he says, Well, Jason's after him. And I said, Done deal. Yeah. It, he told me afterwards. He said, You have no idea how quick it was. Once I told him that that I was that uh, Jason was that, competing for Mahomes. And we're division mates. Right. As soon as you mentioned my name to him, you said deal. I'll do it. Instantly. It was instant. Yeah, I did not want – when I knew that you might have him instead of me, it the competitive nature took over. So then I find out from him. I find out in that moment he's a tra he's traded Pat Mahomes way. I don't know to who. I don't know what the deal is. I know nothing. Little did I know that while I found out Mahomes was traded, I am being recorded covertly by your cell phone, Andy, and I'm, I'm, I, I let you know – that there's a big deal going down. I yeah, said, you did. Oh, you broke the news to me. Yeah, I broke the news that there's a deal going down. Pat Mahomes has been traded. I'm looking at Andy, trying to see if, trying to see if like it wasn't you, was it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> you. Was it you? <laughs> the whole thing got captured on video. I freak out. I was upset. Yeah, he told me he was gonna let you know, and I was like, I got to get the camera rolling just to see, so you can see that on Twitter. I'll put it on YouTube. People can enjoy the real visceral reaction of a Jason Moore uh, losing a trade to you, Andy. You want to see just no acting truth of passion for fantasy. That yeah. is that is it. Well, and that's what, I mean, that's what fantasy is all about. I mean, for me, it's yeah. making you feel bad. Uh, here's a heads up. Jake, congratulations. You won the Alvin Kamara signed jersey for Ooh, pristine auction. Jake C. Jake C, not Jake C. Lee. No. You did not win. No. Well, maybe you did. No, you, I, don't, I don't know if it's him or not. If he did, I'm taking it away. Yeah. Yeah, if so, you won, we're keeping it. We emailed you if you won. Uh, some good articles up on the website this week. Snap count observations, target report, week two dynasty report. Uh, it is Wednesday, and so let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Things got real tense in the office quickly yesterday. Yeah. Because th what what's not being mentioned here is Mike had a very uh, overt reaction too. Because Mike kind of had this, got caught off guard, didn't realize Mahomes was on the block. Yeah, I missed the message. And so then it was like, I mean, you seemed a little upset. Oh, no, I was just upset at, at, at the at the dramatic fashion of, like, they came into our Slack, they said there's big trade. And we literally sat there for five minutes because you're you're over there. You won't say what the trade is. I was just trying to. He told me let let me build the yeah. drama. I was just trying to respect that, that. Was that was the only thing that was obnoxious okay. to me? It was like it was obnoxious. really. Oh, it was very five obnoxious. minutes. It was very obnoxious. Well, I thought he might post it right away. I eventually told you. Just wait for my next trade. I guess people want to know what the trade. I'm just, you know what? I'm going to announce. There's a trade now. I'm, I've made a trade. I haven't actually, but you just wait. Okay. Hey, You'll still be waiting. Yeah, Mike was he not was, upset he is at all. Sour. <laughs> uh, I ended up trading like four draft picks to get uh, four draft picks: Kyler Murray, Peyton Barber, Josh Gordon, to get Mahomes, Carson, and two draft picks. In this league, the economy, like Mike said, it's, it's very distorted. But people have asked that the most: what the trade was. All right, buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. We're doing a week three edition. Brooks has titled this one. I, this would be a thing, Brooks. You just title them. You give them a theme. You give them a concept, and we'll go with it. You name this show 777 edition because this is our 777th episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Oh, jackpot. Wow. Yeah, I would say that's how most people feel, having yeah, discovered oh, yeah. us. Congratulations. Um, we're celebrating 777 in all black. No, oh, jackpot. All black attire. <laughs> all right. Michael Thomas, are you buying seven receptions with Teddy Bridgewater in Seattle in week one? 13 targets, 10 receptions. Week two, 13 targets, 10 receptions. But there's been a change at quarterback. Bridgewater gets it going. I'm going to buy it. It's I'm Michael Thomas. It. Yeah. I mean, he's open, close to the line of scrimmage all the time. I'm not buying 123 yards. But the Seattle secondary is it's a bit rough right now in Thomas is going to get the targets. We just you're hoping that the offense can do something with those targets. Yeah, you're hoping that it's seven for a hundred instead of seven for 
68 and and that's what you don't know I'm gonna buy this as well I think he does he's going to be the main target he's still got Sean Payton orchestrating and now Sean Payton is preparing for Teddy Bridgewater there's really nothing you can do with Michael Thomas when a situation like this happens or Juju you lose the quarterback you're not benching these players you just basically have a built-in like frustration of what he could have done I mean that's basically it uh Juju Smith-Schuster 77 receiving yards at San Francisco this week. Do you buy or sell that in week one? Six for 78, no touchdowns, eight targets. Week two, five for 84, no touchdowns on eight targets. Buy or sell Juju, 77 yards. I will buy it. He did most of his work with Mason Rudolph last week. I think he crosses 77 yards. Yeah, I buy it as well. When when Rudolph came in, there was a huge target share to I Juju. I will sell it. I think Richard Sherman, secondary for San Francisco, locking things down. Mason Rudolph um, having to go into San Francisco. I will, I'm will. i going to sell that one. The 49ers are baffling at this point because like, the expectations were not very high, at least publicly, uh, around the nation. I'm sure San Francisco was very excited for their team. But 31-17 to and 41-17, to uh, is, is this the Both team? Both on the road. Yeah. Yes, and is this the team that had that quick turnaround that you don't you never see it coming, but it happens every year that one or two teams just have this dramatic turn of events, or was it just a product that they played the Bucks and the Bengals? Well, I think they win again this week, and it'll be sitting at, at three and zero. Do you guys have them winning this game against Pittsburgh? I have San Francisco winning. Yes. Yeah, and so um, Pittsburgh just traded for Minka Fitzpatrick. He'll play safety for them. He'll help solidify that secondary. But either of you guys, you guys want to make a water bet on Juju this week? I'll take the 77 yards, You'll yeah. Take, Jason, you want in on that? Hey, our our first just, one of the week? I'm going to watch you two play. Water bet. So Mike and I alone, Jason, I didn't Juju's realize, his star. Like I didn't realize this show was hosted by two men and one big baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's weird. You should have known that. This is our 777th show. Yeah, it is true, Mike. The uh, onus is on you. See, you should have known that. Here's how I feel. Drafts. If you didn't get on that water bet, I would have. Because it needed uh, to happen. You just don't want he the two for He wanted yeah. to lose the risk. <laughs> exactly. Well, maybe maybe if you make a bet later, we'll like we'll trade pink slips. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> if we had real pink slips. All right, Mike Evans, a top seven wide receiver finish against the New York Giants. In week one, he was the wide receiver 78. Oops. In week two, wide receiver 48. So Oops. a top seven finish. It's tough to buy that even though he's my start of the week tomorrow. Ooh. Well, I'm not buying it. I'm I'm selling. He's not my start of the week. I do think he's a, a fine play. Um, obviously, he has the potential and the talent to have a top seven week. So maybe this is the week is just really tough because as of right now, it looks like he's the one B in the offense to Chris Godwin. It might just be too early to know, but I'm definitely selling a top seven performance. I'll sell it on the basis that I have him ranked at number eight this week. <laughs> oh, Yeah. It, I would sell it as well just because, well, I mean, we're we're trying to hedge. I mean, top seven. That's a that's an outstanding week. I think Evans is going to be much better, though. Okay, top the Giants. seventy-seven. I will buy. Thank you. All right, uh, John Brown seven receptions this week. He had seven catches in both week one and two. This is a good number here. Well done, Brooks. Seven against Cincinnati. Buy or sell? Yeah, I'm going to buy. Cincinnati obviously just got torched by the Niners. I, I think that John Brown is the the clear number one target. He'll get seven again. That's a tough call for me because I do agree with everything you said, but seven's a lot of receptions, so I think I'll sell it. I, I'm going to buy. Okay. I'm going to buy. I believe in John Brown. One more buy-sell here. Aaron Jones, 77 rushing yards against the Denver defense, which, by the way, fantasy-wise, the Denver defense has been borderline the worst in football. Like, I think zero points, one point, uh, that's what they've put up so far. Week one. Jones was 13 for 39, but it was against Chicago. Week two, 23 for 116 and one. I'll buy the 77 yards against the Denver Broncos. What do you guys think? I'm going to sell the – because oh, this, okay. right. this is rushing yards, right? Not yeah, just not total, total yards. Yep. yards. I'm going to sell, I think, Denver's defense. Well, they might not be great for fantasy. Uh, I don't expect a, a high-scoring game here. I, I think they bottle him up below 77 yards. All right, that – 77 is a good line because it's 
the, the, the threshold is makes it tough to go one or the other, but I do lean on Andy's side. I'll buy Aaron Jones for All right. 77 rushing yards. Well done, Brooks. That was buy or sell from Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Use the uh, registration code BALLERS. You'll save $5 towards a spectacular sports memorabilia purchase. Brooks, how are you feeling today? How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Yeah? Is yeah. It the judge holding – how are you holding up after 777 episodes of the Fantasy Footballers podcast? Couldn't be better. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. Ready, ready we, for 7-7 seven, seven more. We, just, just 77. Seven, seven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He just, uh, <laughs> he's like, I'm not getting Wait a 1,000. Brooks, did we just get like your three months notice? Uh, no comment. <laughs> uh, well, okay. We don't check in on Brooks enough. Sometimes he's just doing his thing, and we need to check in on him on the show. So I'm glad you're doing well, at least well enough to do another 77 shows. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, we've got some... Great news to talk about. Carry on my wayward son. Mm. The Lions release C.J. Anderson. They claim Paul Perkins, so smash Jackson. Smash Jackson. So right now, your backfield is Johnson and Johnson and Jackson. Ooh. That's what you have in, in Detroit. Now, there are different ways to think about what happened here. Now, C.J. Anderson, to me, was a a problem for Carry on Johnson because of his – potential to steal goal line carries. We haven't really seen we have not. a lot of goal line carries manifest We've seen for none. Detroit. Yeah. We've seen none. From Zero them. is is not much. <laughs> and so we don't really know whether the ball would have been given to C.J. Anderson or not. Now, Ty Johnson, who every Detroit Lions fan finds it extremely important that we hype up, he's a good player. Yes. He, he's looked good on film. He's about the same size as Carrion Johnson. He's, a, he's an inch shorter, about the same weight. So... As opposed to C.J. Anderson, who kind of profiles at this stage of his career as more of a goal line back, I think this is a good. This is good news. You, this you, you lose your handcuff slash, you know, potential running mate. Maybe this is a promotion for Ty Johnson. I certainly am not picking up Paul Perkins or thinking about him for fantasy. But how do you feel about this, Jason? Uh, the the reason they made the move is one is not about Carry On Johnson. It's about Ty Johnson. Ty Johnson took over, even in the last game, took over the backup role. He's so much better than C.J. Anderson. They're saying, hey, let's let C.J. Anderson go. We're paying him more. Bring in Paul Perkins. We'll be fine. But the upside for carry-on is that they don't have a big, bruising bowling ball for the goal line, which means that while the – you know, and not only that, but I've made the argument in the past that having – Look, Carrion's not a bell cow. He's not going to get all the work. Ty Johnson's going to be in there splitting the work with him. But I would rather a running back be in there that doesn't stop the drive. C.J. Anderson comes in. Sure. They That's don't pick point. up the third down, and the Lions are off the field. So, yeah, Ty Johnson's going to be in. He's going to be getting more work. He's going to be frustrating Carrion Johnson owners. But he actually might be good for Carrion Johnson owners because the Lions – Maybe we'll get goal line opportunities. So, yeah, this is – I think it's a net win, but minuscule. Okay. All right. Mike, you agree with that? Yeah. You Last week you saw on Johnson in the, the mid-50s of about snaps, and then you saw 20 or so go to C.J. Anderson and 20 or so go to to uh, Ty Johnson. So I I don't know that, John, that Ty Johnson is going to jump up to that 40 number. So I think there will be a slight increase – for carry on. This is going to really annoy people with the box scores, though. The people, Johnson Johnson. People that can't watch yeah. the game, uh, yeah. they're just going to look and be like, well, how many rece receptions did he have? Uh, That's I mean, either I, four or three. If there's reception, they went to carry on. That's what I like about the well, – compared to Ty? No way, man. He's they're involved in both, the passing they're game. They're both involved in both yeah. parts. Uh, it was like the Chubb box score where you see D. Dot Johnson. Behind him, and you're like, Wait, oh, Duke's is, still is there, Duke huh? still stealing <laughs> carries away from Nick Chubb? All right, Deshaun Jackson is expected to miss Sunday's game against the Lions and will remain sidelined for the Week 4 contest. Same course of action that they're taking with Alshon Jeffrey from the reports that we've seen. And the Eagles are so banged up that they literally canceled practice yesterday. They just canceled it. Yeah, that's wild. They just said, we need a day off. Um, 
The report that I read, Brooks, I, I see groin in here. The report I read was an abdominal injury, keeping him out for that two weeks, uh, an abdominal strain. And so he's been bothered by it for a little while. They're going to give him a break. So if you need a spot start, Nelson Aguilar looks really interesting. Is there a name outside of Aguilar that you'd be interested in? And then often it's like, you know, you're not looking at Matt Collins or J.J. No. Ortega right side. I, I don't, White I don't, side. White side. I don't think you're you looking. You called him right side. At yeah, that was me trying to you know repronounce his first name well, based on yeah, the, look, the feedback ju- we've heard. Just I mean, we don't. His last name. We want to pronounce people's last names correctly, like, like professional. Well, it's it's not just professional. It's it's also the, respect for the right all. human thing to do. Like I don't need people calling me Mike Rigged. Like that would be annoying. So it 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 sounds like. We people have been pronouncing his name wrong, and it's JJ Arthega Whiteside with a TH sound. That is what we have read. Yeah, it is very difficult to do. It is because you don't sound. You sound like if you're mispronouncing it, you're doing it in a really embarrassing way. Right. Yeah. How is it pronounced, Jason? It's pronounced Arthega Whiteside. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, okay. We're, we're just trying to we're just, trying to do right by the man. <laughs> we're here to do what's right. Yeah. I'm not looking for any other. I'm not looking for Arthega Whiteside. I'm not looking at Mac Hollins. Uh, you know, this is a bump up clearly to Ertz. A yes, bump down, Ertz gets the biggest bump. A bump down for Wentz um, <clears throat> and a, and makes Nelson Aguilar a, a legit play. All right. A.J. Green news came out yesterday saying that he's expected to be sidelined longer than the original optimistic report, which was like a 68-week timetable from the injury. So we're not expecting A.J. Green to actually get back out onto the field until he is deeming himself 100% which likely means you're not going to see him on the field in the month of September at this point. I would agree with that. Extend that John Ross yes. start him up window. I mean, John Ross, it's only two weeks in, and it took a garbage time, massive touchdown to get there, but John Ross can do that. He's he's involved big time in in a team that is – they're throwing the ball more in a neutral game script than anybody else. I mean, this, this offense has done a complete – 180 from what Marvin Lewis used to run. So John Ross is he's a solid play moving forward. The matchup's not great this week against Buffalo, but I'm still playing Ross. All right. Uh what else do we have? The Drew Brees news, we already had this, but he he's undergoing thumb surgery and will return potentially week 10 following the Saints bye. What do fantasy owners of Drew Brees do if they don't have an IR spot and you have this oh, long you, of an you drop him. Yeah, I drop Tim, the moment you found out. I mean, Drew Brees is not a plug-and-play every matchup, weekly starter. If he's on the road in a difficult matchup, they run touchdowns. You've seen it over the last few years. So while he's injured this long, no, you shouldn't have him anymore. All right, uh, other news that we have for you. We don't really know. Cam Newton, it's, the news on yeah. Cam Newton is is ambiguous right now. He He's in a walking boot. He's still in the boot today. He's still in the boot, but they said if he doesn't practice – First, they say Kyle Allen is likely to get the start and Cam is out. Then there was some equivocation on that saying Cam could start if he practices tomorrow and that it's still up in the air. Either way, this is really bad news for, you know. Everyone. Yeah, everyone. Yes, C- everyone. You, you're not, if Cam is out, you're not start Like, if he's out there, if he's playing, you're not starting Cam Newton right now with the bum foot while he's not running the ball. A hobbled Cam, I'm not sure what's better. Kyle Allen or a hobbled cam, either one, I think, is gross. So I'm not really looking to start DJ Moore. I'm not looking to start Curtis Samuel. Maybe because of the landscape, you you can you can continue rolling with Greg Olson, who's looked fine, and then Christian McCaffrey. But outside of Olson and McCaffrey, man, I, I don't want to play with the Panthers right now, even against Arizona. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you have the Browns, David Njoku, not practicing, concussion protocols. Sterling Shepard still in the concussion protocol after missing this past week. So one quick reminder for you. We call it drop it like it's hot. Oh, drop it like it's hot. Because you need to check your waiver wire today for the players that were released to pick up other players. It's a great time to check and see if somebody let somebody go, gave up too early, that type of thing. And so uh, check your waiver wire today. News and Notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. And uh, don't miss a single piece of information. Grab the Sleeper app. And Foot Clan, today's episode is brought to you by 20th Century Fox's new film, Ad Astra, which looks 
oh, amazing. Dude, I can't wait, man. Dude, I, I am like a huge, I love sci-fi. I love space yes. movies. I love Brad Pitt. Yeah. He stars as Roy McBride, an astronaut who travels to the outer edges of the solar system to find his missing father who dis- disappeared in space years ago. New discovery suggests his dad is still alive, oh. but he may be leading experiments that threaten the entire universe. See, I'm all about that What's life. What's up with that? I'm all about that like end of the universe type of movie. I yes. love these things. The trailers, I've been watching them for months. Outstanding. It also stars Tommy Lee Jones, little known fact, former offensive tackle during his collegiate years, along with Ruth Naga, Liv Tyler, Donald Sutherland. It was directed by James Gray with cinematographer Hoyta Van Hoytema, who previously made Dunkirk and Interstellar. You are going to absolutely love it. Ad Astra hits theaters September 20th. Check it out. And reminder, Foot Clan, now is your chance to ball out with us on FanDuel. You got to get in. These things have a limited run every single week. Don't be left holding the bag. Make sure you get in because we're teaming up with FanDuel to bring you the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. You pick your best lineup, face off against other listeners. You can win cash prizes each week. There are 15 chances to win with over $30,000 in prizes. If you win any of the weeks, you're going to qualify for that Week 16 championship. And if you take that beast down, you will receive an all-expenses-paid trip to AZ, to our studio, Hang out with us. Watch us record one of the podcasts. Like I said, these have limited space. you got to get in right now. Each week, we're going to talk about our picks and give you insider info so to help you build that lineup. Hurry up. Get those lineups set for your chance to win the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series and hang out with us in Arizona. Go to FanDuel.com slash ballers to enter. That's FanDuel.com slash ballers. It's open. Go claim your spot. All right, and we're going to start talking trades, some uh, questions from the Foot Clan, a couple other quick injury updates. I want to let people know, Devin Singletary with the hamstring injury, he's not practicing on Wednesday. Head coach Sean McDermott is simply labeling him day-to-day. I, c- I can't imagine he plays. Yeah, I don't I don't believe so either with the way that he went down, but you just don't know. That's the, the current rhetoric. You don't play him if he's out there, though. I mean – if he plays this this yeah. early, yeah. I feel like the chance of reaggravation is like I, I would be scared off. Yeah, even against uh Bengals. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sucks. Let's move on. Let's talk trades. Now that's not new, Mike, right? <laughs> is well, it's, it? is it's it new? Mike Rick. We've we've played it before. It's just been a while. Yeah. So we took in some questions from Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube, and uh, you, you guys made some trades yesterday too. Mm-hmm. Now, Jason, you made yours. Now, would you have made these trades if you had no. not been? Yeah, Jason tilt traded. No, you 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 I, were reeling from. I was reeling from losing out on the trade du jour yesterday, and not only that, but so in in our division, which is my team, yours, Andy's, and then a Papa Josh from around here is also in there. His team is. Unfair. Is unfair. Is, is uh, absolutely it's ridiculous. Pretty, pretty strong. So to compete, we've got to really go hard. I went after, uh, traded away Njoku and a uh, pick for Zach Ertz. Yeah, he gave up a, f- a second rounder. A second rounder, second and, rounder. and a first rounder uh, for an injured Tyreek Hill. Yeah, so, so talk to me for a second about that because I think people want to know what the value of Tyreek Hill is, and I didn't really know. When I was talking to this same owner about Patrick Mahomes, so sure. Um, so the thing with Tyreek Hill right now, I looked into his injury situation. You know, you you've got the four to six week timeline, but there's been more optimism lately from around the team, to the tune where people are saying he's he's probably not going to play this week, which he's not. But I mean, when you even have that conversation, they're saying he's week to week at this point already. You could have you could have Tyreek Hill back in two weeks or three weeks, and once he's back, I mean, in, you know, I think half-point scoring last year, he was the number one wide receiver. We've seen Pat Mahomes balling out. Let me me ask this question to Mike because I don't feel like at this point now that you've acquired him, you'll be able to answer this properly. But, Mike, do you view – I mean, obviously a lot of Sammy Watkins hype, performance. Mm -hmm. He's one of the league leaders in targets. He looks healthy. He looks spry. McCole Hardman, new addition. Uh, Demarcus Robinson stepping up. Tyreek Hill, do you view him? Obviously, he's a game-changing talent, 
But do you view him in a different light this year because of what you're seeing with a healthy Sammy Watkins and the addition of Michael Hardman than you did last year? I do, uh, slightly. Like this, the, that breakout game of Demarcus Robinson. And look, it's I know this. It's just narrative street, but like. You, the, the way that Patrick Mahomes talks about Demarcus Robinson, he loves him as a player, and and then Hardman as well. Like the fact that the the Chiefs have these other players that you can spin the wheel of wh who's going to get the, the deep ball wheel, yeah, who's going to get the forty yard touchdown today, and it's not just Tyreek Hill every single time. Like that's that's going to factor in. I'm I I'm not avoiding Tyreek Hill. I would love to trade for him, but I think that he has a slight amount of uh, of uh, regression potential building in and, and like each week that goes by that we see more from Hardman and the potential of Robinson is just going to factor into that a little bit more and Mike you made a dynasty trade you're uh, you moved Devonte Freeman yeah my dynasty what? my dynasty squad the starting roster on paper it should perform unfortunately it is not so I've had to sell I, mean, I and a one of the owners in our dynasty league put out a message that I'm buying, and I, I had to sell Freeman. So I was able to sell him for a first and second round rookie pick for next year. So piggybacking on that from Instagram, MaxK2313 said, should owners sell Devontae Freeman while he still has value from the draft capital spent on him, or do you believe that there are better days ahead? And your trade, you're in a dynasty league. You're you're factoring a lot more things than just will you get a good week from right. Devonta Freeman next week. Yeah, I didn't week. want to sell him because I do believe that better days are coming okay. for Devonta Freeman. It, it, he looks – he still looks okay. He is still the primary running back for a very high-powered offense. I think that things have just bounced the, the wrong way. And it, it, the offensive line is a concern, though. So another Instagram uh, Foot Clan member says – what is the trade value then? He he has Devontae Freeman as an RB2. Doesn't know how to feel about that. How do you feel about him being an RB2, Jason? Yeah, I mean, I, look, I am, I, I'm more concerned about Devontae Freeman. Are better days ahead? Yes, but that doesn't mean I, I wouldn't capitalize on his name, his draft stock, and the value of someone believing he's still going to be fine. I would like to use him, package him with someone else to upgrade at running back. You know, trade a Devonta Freeman – and a, a quality wide receiver to draw, try and go get a Chris Carson. You know, if you could, if you could take even you know John Ross or right. uh, uh, Terry McLaurin, someone that you got who's just been on fire the first two weeks. Maybe you package them together and try to upgrade at running back. I would do that in a heartbeat because the offensive line issues we've seen from Atlanta. Uh, that was all I was talking about in the preseason, and I was like, I know it's preseason, but they just look like. They don't exist. Matt Ryan snaps the ball, and he's got three guys in his face. It's really hard to have a successful running game without an offensive line, and the only way that that's overcome is by the targets, and the passing game work hasn't been old-school dominant right. for Devonta Freeman like it, like it was. He'll have better days, which means people will trade for him. I think a really interesting kind of comp here is to look at what David Johnson's done inefficiently with a bad offensive line. If you look at since the beginning of 2017, there are four players with enough qual you know, enough qualifying carries to fit into this category. There are four players at 3.6 per carry. It's the Garrett Blunt, not a good start. And David Johnson's in that category as well. I think the other was Doug Martin. Oh, so, Krampus. But, you know, David Johnson's played with a, a very bad offensive line for two years. Now, you can flip that and say, okay, yards from scrimmage changes because David Johnson is heavily involved in the passing game to compensate for inefficiency in the running game. If you don't involve Freeman enough, you're not going to have enough value. Out, and I think that that's what you're seeing a little bit right now. Here's some carry on Johnson questions we've got from the Foot Clan. Twitter. Would you trade Sony Michelle and Miles Sanders to acquire Carryon Johnson in a standard scoring league? That is a gigantic no for me. That's a no for me as the no. Carryon Johnson owner, especially in a standard league. In a st I mean, not that it would really change in a PPR, but in a standard league, touchdowns are king, and Sony's going to have the most touchdowns for sure, far more than Carryon Johnson, just based on team projected scoring. And you could argue. That over the course of the season, Miles Sanders 
has every bit of option to get as many touchdowns as carry on Johnson does. It's yeah, there's no way. I was going to simplify that. In a standard league, would you trade Sony Michelle for Carry On Johnson? Straight up. No, not in a standard league. Okay. In a standard, I would trade Carry On for Sony. Here's a question about trading Carry On Johnson away. A couple of them. Austin Jacob asked these ones. Carry On Johnson, would you send him away for Sammy Watkins? No. Assuming I have running back depth, because that's the only. Whenever you're that talking, will factor into in all of these things. If like you're you're looking at your team, you're like, I've got three solid running backs. I'm going to trade one. That's a mistake. You because you're you're toast then if any kind of injury happens. So if you actually have depth, then yes, I would trade him for Sammy Watkins. In I, in general, I think that they are about the same tier as one another. They could both have big games. They could both disappoint. I would rather have the running back. Would you trade Carry On for Joe Mixon? No. I'm a no in that category as well. Interesting. I, I thought you might be on the Mixon side. Yeah. It, Got Mixon concerns? I just have Mixon ceiling concerns, and and so I'm more interested to see what carry on can do over the course of the year than, you know, Mixon dealing with the injury and things like that. Mike, you're <laughs> making some grimacing faces. That, I, have that to face, I have to report on that. That face was – look, I know it's been rough and that Joe Mixon has a bum ankle yeah. right now. Joe Mixon is running for a sensational 1.59 yards per carry. Mm. 17 Whoa. carries for 27 yards oh, on the season. Boy. There's really not a difference between, I mean, Joe Mixon's situation, Devontae Freeman's situation, offensive line concerns. We just kind of saw Joe Mixon overcome those last year with a bad offensive line, looked good in the preseason. I think there are brighter days ahead for Mixon, just like I do Freeman, but... I, yeah, I think I would lean on the carry on side. We're yeah, I I agree. I'm gonna take the healthy guy right now. That's that's all it is. Yeah, yeah. take the healthy guy with uh, somewhat of an offensive line by comparison to the Bengals who have none. Now, is Joe Mixon a trade for candidate in general? If you could buy him for cheaper than carry on, are you going and poking, or do you not want to worry about it? I would go and poke for Joe Mixon because I've seen. I mean, I saw some people on Twitter talk about him hitting the waiver wire in their league, which is not going to happen in a lot of leagues. But if there's a sentiment out there, the negativity, if if somebody in your league is making Mike's 1.59 yard per carry face that he just made, which yep. is really disturbing, uh, then you go target Have you him. ever seen 1.59? It's low. Yeah, yeah. Only Sonny Michelle's .9 in week one. <laughs> well, I've seen that. All right, here are some James Conner questions. Take the temperature of that situation. Another Banged up, inefficient player thus far this year. Saved last week with the touchdown, but maybe that is what can provide you the ammo to trade him. Would you trade away James Conner for Nick Chubb? I would do that in a heartbeat. I guess that's probably going to be my answer to all of these, but I would trade James Conner for Nick Chubb. Yeah, I love I love James Conner. I, actually, I believe he is a good running back. But he's he's nicked up already, and the loss of Big Ben, I'm not on team quarterback goes out, so now they're going to rely on the running back. Like I want an elite quarterback running the team for my fantasy running back because I want scoring opportunities. So I will I will take Nick Chubb here. And did you guys catch the uh, the old Freddie Kitchens line about Nick Chubb? Oh, I did. I saw I it walking not. into the, the office he, this morning. It's the, the classic. 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 I love Michael Keith. <laughs> classic line from head coach who controls the team saying, oh, man, I would love to get Nick Chubb some more looks. Well, if you know. You should talk to the guy who can do it. Do they ever Freddy? say that right in the mirror? Does Freddie ever wake up in the morning and just say, I would like to get him some more looks? What? <laughs> so, it's are so you how ridiculous. Because you would like to see him say, I'm going to give yes. him more looks. Yes. Yeah, yeah, as would I. Some coaches say that. They say, I didn't get the ball to him enough. You know, I'll try to get him the ball more. I, 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 I think like we're all... Like, it's per like, I, I got to figure this out. I think we're all How possibly is that, Chubb going to get the ball? That Chubb is better than Connor at this point. I'm still in on Connor yeah, in I am too. general. I, I think they just have a really good offensive line, and they're, they're going to want to use him. Their offense might not be as good. I, I'm certainly downgrading Connor without Big Ben, but I'm not off. I, I look at these other two questions coming in from Instagram and Facebook, and I'm on the Connor side. Do you believe James Connor's trade value will be better or worse two weeks from now? 
I think it they will got, be they, so they have about the same as what it is now. I mean, if if I had to choose, you know, what is what's their next two weeks schedule? Yeah, that, I don't have that. We're right on the road in San Francisco this upcoming week. Okay, he's coming off the injury, and then after the Niners, looks like it's the Bengals. So, I would yeah. say it's up. I would say it's up. Yeah, I would be. I I would personally move on from him. I know you guys both believe in him. Would you trade James Conner for Mike Evans? This is team dependent based on your needs at wide receiver and running back. Yeah, it's an even trade. Yeah, I would say it's a fair trade. So if you if you need a wide receiver, I am still in on Mike Evans. Uh, I think he's gonna have a really good week this week. Now this one is is interesting. Andy. It's a dynasty trade. Oh, I didn't realize it was dynasty from Facebook, and it's a James Conner for David Montgomery Ooh. trade. Would you in a dynasty league? Would you trade James Conner for David Montgomery? So they, yeah, the the dynasty factor, and I, and I would. The dynasty fact, because well, you like all James Conner questions, going back six months, you were you were out. Well, I and it's it's tough because I don't want to just like I'm not sitting here trying to. There's no victory lap to be had. There's no like like I've been out on James Conner because I don't believe that the truth of the first half of last year, you know, I don't think it's a reflection of his future production. And you now you've got these situations with Mason Rudolph the rest of the year. So, you know, I know you like the talent of Conner. I think he's just overvalued. So in that case, I would like to cash on on him before watching the Mason Rudolph experience with him, just because of the risk factor. Like I yes, think there's a lot of risk. There's a lot of like the the odds of Connor looking like the same dynasty asset he is today at the end of the year to me are lower than the odds of Montgomery's looking like a greater asset at the end of the year. So I'm that's where I split the difference. Sure. I don't think you throw Connor out in all circumstances by any means. But that that's just how I weigh in. Yeah, yeah. It, it, your your risk assessment is 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 right on. We do know though that this is dynasty, so you're also factoring in next year as well. And Big Ben says he's coming back. the The surgery that he's having, he should be able to to recover from uh, as as a quarterback. Says I feel like I have a whole lot more to give. Yeah, so he he said he's coming back to play at the contract. So next year still has to be factored in. And I would, and James Conner, he's still on the rookie deal. I can't, I can't imagine the pay, uh, the Patriots, the Steelers moving on from James Conner when they have him for super duper cheap, and the way that Tomlin rolls with with the Bell Cow running back, Tomlin could be a concern. Yeah, I mean, like I, if the team tanks, do they get rid of Mike Tomlin at the end of the year? Because that changes the equation massively. They did give him a one year extension recently, so I would doubt they move on. But that's that's something you have to factor in. I, I think I would take the David Montgomery side here because I don't think the two are super far apart in value. You've got two years of age gap between these two running backs. It doesn't bother me. Uh, they're you know obviously David Montgomery is on his year one rookie contract, and the investment was more. That the Bears gave than the investment to not by much. Yeah, not not well, not by much. If you're just taking pick for pick, but considering what they had in the draft class, what they did to to use the pick on David Montgomery, uh, I would take my opportunity. All right. It, traditionally, we see. I mean, we see the Steelers hang on to their head coaches for a long period of time. Right. It's interesting with Tomlin. You know, trying to put him in a position where. You know he's never he's not going to be this lame duck coach at some point coming up, but he's still through twenty twenty one. I tend to think he'll be around. I do. Uh, even if they end up having to rebuild, you've got the built in excuse losing your quarterback. Right. I, I don't know if they let him go or not. But let's move on. Some Austin Eckler questions. This is a really good topic, and we'll 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 hit these before we do some Thursday night preview because man, the temptation for fantasy owners, the difficulty of knowing do I cash in on what I have yeah. versus you know, just writing it, you know, cashing in on James Conner early last year was not a benefit to fantasy owners in general. No, because he you would have felt real bad. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he sustained production throughout the season at a, at a high value. Uh, so, you know, what is the trade value of Austin Eckler? He's the number one running back in football through two weeks. We had some news this morning, you know, Melvin Gordon coming out and saying, Hey, I'm going to play somewhere this year. Please because don't forget about me. I'm Melvin Gordon. I'm going to play somewhere because it would be a waste of talent if I didn't. That's not news that I can bank on. Him thinking it would be a waste of talent if he's not out there. The team has drawn a line in the sand. They've been willing to pay him $10 million. They've said we're not negotiating your contract until the after the season. And it's that's it. I mean, Jerry Jones isn't running the Los no. Angeles Chargers. And 
And so there is no leverage here for Melvin Gordon. Yeah, the Chargers are looking at him. Oh, it would be a waste of a waste of talent for a year. That's that's a shame. I mean, that's a shame because we don't care. Melvin Gordon knows he has to come back. He's talked about it on Twitter. He's well aware that he wants to accrue the season so that he can hit free agency next year. He's going to come back now. It could be to a, if if an injury happens to some team that is then willing to trade for Melvin Gordon. It could be for some he could play somewhere else. Probably no team's going to come. So at some point he comes back, ruins the value of Eckler. That doesn't mean Eckler goes to zero, but certainly ruins his stardom. But I'm still holding on to Eckler. Here's a perfect example. I was I have Eckler in our listener league. I was offered James Conner for Austin Eckler and McCole Hardman, and I turned it down because Austin Eckler hasn't been good. He's been great. Yes. I want the victories right now. I want yes. to win and accumulate. The, uh, get me in the playoffs. I'll figure things out a at a later time. I still think you have several weeks left of Austin Eckler. And so, if, if I mean, his first two weeks are the best two first weeks of fantasy franchise history for the Chargers, including the LaDainian Tomlinson years, including Melvin Gordon's uh, first two weeks of of any of his careers. He's the number one running back in football right now. I always like to give these reports. People want to know about our league of record and maybe a lay of the land in terms of fab dollars and fab spending. That's why my eyes went really big earlier. Yeah, so in our $100 fab budget league, uh, Demarcus Robinson, $21. Somebody bought him for $21. Are yes. you, is that that's around chasing. where you expected, or do you think no, that that's... No, that's, that's higher than I expected. I thought he would be maybe in the... If someone wanted to pay up, I thought it would be the low teens. All right, Nelson Aguilar went for $7. Trying I, to buy a flex start this week? I yeah. had a bid in for $10 on Nelson Aguilar before I traded for Zach Ertz, and then I didn't want to run Wentz, Ertz, and Aguilar out okay. this week, but I think he's a really solid flex start. Will Disley, Seattle tight end, went for $6. What do you think about that? Seems very appropriate with the tight end landscape. I'll let you know. I bid a dollar on him. Mm. I had a bid in on him before I had Ertz. Um, okay. I mean, that was pretty much the big spins in our league in terms of who was there on free agency. But I, I was curious about what Demarcus Robinson would go for. Uh, that's a pretty big chunk. He may be, you know, you talk about buying wins. Yeah. If you have a multi-flex league or something of that nature, or you are hurting at wide receiver, and you can buy yourself two or three weeks. I don't blame anybody for doing that. Yeah, the hard part about Tyree Kill is you, we just we don't know. We don't know when Tyree Kill is coming back. Is it in two weeks? Yep. Is it in a month? Well, and it's a strange injury. It's an injury where Ex exactly you're not coming back, and you know it's a medical concern. And so, if if there's risk of a medical problem happening, do they hold him out longer? Does he you know, play differently for a couple of weeks? I don't know the answer to those questions. Uh, but this team seems to have the luxury of waiting if based on their performance. If he's out for four weeks. Four more? Yeah, if, if he's out, like, let's say you get another four shots at Demarcus Robinson. We, and I'm not sure, giving him the sure, production sure. of last week, but just the chance of Demarcus Robinson going off. He is the wide receiver, too. Look at the snap breakdown. Yeah. It's Sammy Watkins and Demarcus Robinson, and then McCole Hardman is the third. Yep. If we get four more weeks at that, then – then he could be worth the the price that he went for in our league. We just don't know when Hill's coming back. Yeah. Yep. Thursday night breakdown. That may please be, no. That may be the actual description please of no. the event post mortem. Like you may just call it. Do you remember the Thursday night breakdown? Oh, when yeah. we all broke down in tears. <laughs> Because the score is six five somehow. I don't even know oh. how you score five. I mean, a safety, a field goal. And Marcus then, Mariota versus Gardner Minshew. It's a forty over under in this game. The Titans go to Jacksonville. Jacksonville has all of the uh, controversy around Jalen Ramsey, who's expected to play for them this week. They're zero and two. The Titans are one and one. I do expect the Titans to win this game. They're one and a half point road favorites. They're one and a half point road favorites. I expect them to win by two. Or, or three. You know right. what I mean? Like, this is not a game I'm really excited about. Seven to nine. The only player, I mean, they're ultimately Derrick Henry and Leonard Fournette need to be played. Yes. I think that's, like, end of list unless you are rostering Delaney Walker, in which case you're going to play your tight end. There but are, Gardner, Minshew, any of the wide receivers, I don't have the confidence level in DJ Chark that others do or Chris Conley or any of 
his pass catching weapons in this game. The, these are two really good defenses against two really bad quarterbacks, and there's supposed to be 20 mile an hour sustained winds and gusts up to 30 miles an hour. So yeah, you're going to be running the ball both sides a lot. So you know Fournette, Derrick Henry, they might be okay. Low scoring game, gross. <laughs> Pound the under. Yeah, I mean, I I tend to agree with that, Mike. Do you have any other thoughts on this matchup that would be informative for fantasy owners? No, it's very very difficult. Delaney Walker is in. I have I have building confidence in DJ Chark moving forward as a flex play, but this is not the matchup. When you combine what the weather looks like it's going to be with the matchup, I I don't want to be playing him this week. Yeah, I mean, he's a second-year guy, and he's making a step forward, but he's also not going to score 16 times this year. And right now, a lot of his hype is built. He scored in week one, scored in week two. Chris Conley's been involved in the offense as well, and I don't think D.D. Westbrook is a slouch talent-wise. And so, you know, it's just not a situation where I'm excited. Now, if you if you had to start one wide receiver for Jacksonville this week, like you are being forced to, Mike. It's Chark. You would start DJ Chark and just, yeah. just chase the first two weeks? Yeah, I, I think you're chasing what you saw as the target distribution from Gardner. He's got a nice exactly. rapport with Gardner so far. Yeah, he it would be Chark. I dropped D, uh, DD. I dropped his mm. sweetie, DD, no. uh, everywhere. I was so excited for DD this year. It's Those are those things that are such shames because – Robbie Anderson situation I'm, right now. Oh, DD exactly. Westbrook. Like, I was extremely confident in DD. I, I mean – the, you know, there's certain players, it's all about probability and what you put the odds of being right or wrong on, on somebody. I, I had my odds very high that DD was going to be great, and but that was on the basis of how Nick Foles plays quarterback. Nick Foles is gone, Gardner comes in, targets someone else. Yeah, Chris Conley has 12 targets on the year. Uh, last week, DJ Chuck had nine targets. Conley had five, so yeah, that's why yeah, I, Chark, Chark makes. Sense. I'm just gonna chase the targets. It's it's not doesn't feel great, but if if you're saying you're forced to play a Jacksonville Jaguar, one, what are you doing in that league? That's that's a league that sounds very bad for your health. Marcus, it would be Chark. Marcus Mariota six and two against Jacksonville in his career, four straight wins, but has averaged 142 passing yards per game in the last five against Jacksonville. It's not going that's to pretty be pretty high for him. It's not, yeah, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> A reminder, take your Thursday night players oh. out of the flex if you have them. It sounds like in this game we're pretty much advising please don't flex or regular play any of these players outside of the running backs. I am I am a really, really – I'll say this. I'm a really, really big Derrick Henry fan rest of the season. That's fair. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm really, really into the Derrick Henry experience at this point. Uh, this week he's RB16 going up against this Jags defense, but – if you just listen to the way, you know, the beat writers around the team, the way the head coach speaks, what they believe the recipe for success is, and what the statistical evidence is that when they give him enough work, you know, they win the ball game. And if you listen to head, their head coach this past week, talked about the fact that, you know, they need to be better on third down so that Derrick Henry can go from, you know, 16, 17 carries to 20 to 25. It's rare to have a situation where you've got a guy big enough, strong enough, a focus in the offense enough to say we want to actively give him 25 carries a game. And that's the situation for Derrick Henry. And if you look at the target utilization or the target difference between him and Deion Lewis, I think they have the exact same amount of catches on the year. The targets aren't that different. They're actually throwing Derrick and Henry the ball at least a little bit, which is you got, something. Yeah. It's five total targets. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, but what does Deion Lewis have? I will pull. Yeah, him. I mean, they're not throwing the ball to the running back that much. They're not throwing the ball that much. That's Deion Lewis has five total targets. Yeah, so it, it's just not a situation. I'm in on Henry for the rest of the season. Maybe this is a week where he underwhelms and you can go buy him. I don't know. I'm in on these defenses. Go ahead and fire up your DSTs on Thursday night football. Well, if, yeah, for this week. Yeah. What happens to Jacksonville's D if Jalen goes bye bye? I I still think that their their D line. And Boye is uh, is is great. It is. It will be interesting to see if if Abuya. Ramsey plays. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. Uh, the, because the reports are, if the trade of Ramsey is going to happen, it won't be until Friday for whatever reason. And do the Jaguars 
risk playing him. Let's say they have a handshake agreement done, and then Ramsey goes out and gets hurt. Like, do they risk that? My, the Dolphins sure did. Minka was out there playing, but it'll, it that's just an interesting thing. It doesn't really have bearing on fantasy, but it's fascinating. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. All right, that is it for today's episode. Back with matchups tomorrow. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show today. You can go to pristineauction.com. And, uh, guys, matchups tomorrow. Hooray! I'll, I'll put that video of Jason up on YouTube. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And a reminder, Navy Federal is proud to serve over 8 million members, including active duty military, the DOD veterans, and their families. You'll receive a lifetime of membership benefits with Navy Federal, and you can easily access accounts, transfer money, pay bills, and deposit checks with the Navy Federal mobile app. Visit NavyFederal.org slash footballers for more information or call 1-888-842-6328 or download the Navy Federal Credit Union app. Message and data rates may apply.